Today marks exactly one year since I bought the UG UD10 pen tablet on the famous November 11th or 11.11 sale on JD.com, which would be something like the Chinese Amazon. With a year of use under my belt, I feel like now would be a good time to actually talk about my real experience with this tablet. You may remember that when I first bought it, and what I showed in the previous video, I compared it to my previous drawing rig, which was the Samsung 10.1 Galaxy Note tablet, and it compared quite favorably. In fact, at this point, I am almost convinced that the majority of the technology involved in this tablet is identical to that one. Although it boasts more levels of pressure, the actual use seems about the same. Now, if you want to look at it from a negative point of view, we do have to remember that this is 2012 technology. There are a lot of things available today which have much greater resolution, much greater accuracy, and many other features. But you also have to look at the flip side of that, which is that this tablet cost me about $180. And considering how currencies are going today, it would even be less. But let's talk about some of the individual aspects of using it in production. So I've been drawing on this tablet for about a year now, and I can say that it is definitely functional. But that's about all that I can say about it. Now don't get me wrong, at about $180, if you're on a budget, you absolutely cannot go wrong to buy a tablet like this where you can actually draw directly on the screen. It is amazing from that standpoint and especially at that price. On the other hand, if money was no object, I probably would not even consider it. And this is not to say that it is bad, this is only to say that, as I mentioned before, we are talking about technology comparable to what was great in 2012. Now, from the positive standpoint, the tablet draws very well. Not perfect, but it does draw well. It does have some drawbacks. One of them is accuracy. Now, before I talk about accuracy, I want to talk about something else, which uh, a lot of people ask about, which wouldn't really be an issue in this case, and that is lag. Lag probably would be more about the CPU in your computer and the software you are using. And since this connects to your computer and does not stand alone and work on its own, like the Samsung 10.1 Galaxy Note, lag simply doesn't figure into it, even with extremely large brushes. On the Samsung, lag wasn't an issue either, unless I used a very large brush. So that doesn't come up when using this tablet. There also is a little bit of separation between where your pen touches the screen and where your line actually draws from, but I noticed that that feeling disappears probably within a day or two of use and you don't even notice it anymore. There was a probably slightly less separation on the Samsung tablet, but once again, uh, as I mentioned before, you get used to it very quickly and that issue goes out the window. Accuracy, however, is another issue altogether. If you're doing very tight line work or doing something that is meant to be very sharp and very smooth, I find that to get a drawing experience close to what I want or what I'm used to and certainly close to anything like drawing on paper, I have to zoom in to about 200% or maybe even 300% in some cases to actually draw with that kind of accuracy. Drawing one to one actually has the smoothest or best feeling, but if you really need to connect two sharp thin lines, it may prove very difficult drawing at one to one. So from an accuracy standpoint, uh, zooming in became a necessity. Uh, accuracy does have other issues also on the edges. The accuracy goes off even more when you get to the far edges of the screen. And this can be a problem in some applications which have uh, menus or sliders on the far edge of the screen because when you get to those areas and the accuracy is off, the cursor does tend to jump a little bit here and there. That's not something that I can say I've gotten used to even after a year of use. And certainly in many applications it doesn't come up because the menus are well placed, but I can think of at least one application which I use regularly, which is Poser, which has a very tiny menu and slider on the very edge of the screen, and to this very day, it is extremely difficult to select that. But like I said, that's only in a few specific cases, but it does actually affect when you are drawing at the 
very far edge of the screen and sometimes I would find myself uh, sliding my drawing canvas so that something that I needed to draw at the edge was more centered. So that is another drawback to consider. However, there is an aspect which I didn't perhaps know about or mention in my previous video about this tablet and that is it works with the screen off. When you have the screen off, it works like a normal Wacom tablet and you can just draw uh, while looking at your normal screen and use it to do 3D modeling or ZBrush or whatever it is you want to do, the same as you would use uh, anywhere else. And interestingly, throughout my year of use, I found myself using it like this more and more, which is weird because I bought it to replace a Wacom tablet. But it works very well in that fashion. Throughout this year, I have used this tablet to draw in TV paint, do 3D modeling in Moto, animation in Lightwave or Poser, and more recently, even doing sculpting in ZBrush, and it has served me very well in all those aspects. If faced with the choice between getting this tablet and something simple like a Wacom Bamboo or even worse, an off-brand tablet, I would definitely recommend getting this tablet. It does its job very well, and the price really can't be beat. On the other hand, as money becomes less of an issue, I would seriously consider upgrading. In fact, for me personally, I have heard even from Japanese animation professionals that the iPad Pro is an amazing drawing experience even when trying to connect sharp and thin lines. But let's not forget that to get a decent iPad Pro with the pencil and all the features and things that you would want, you're looking at spending $1,500 or even close to $2,000 if you want to max out the storage and everything else. So if you can afford a Cintiq or a Surface Studio or an iPad Pro with pencil and you're very serious about doing your art professionally, by all means go for these higher end tablets. It will be more than worth it. But if your budget is in that two or three hundred dollar range, I would still highly recommend this tablet. It does do the job. Thank you for watching, and if you found this information helpful, please give the video a like, comment, and share, and subscribe. Thank you very much.